Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and thank you for joining us for another Women in Wealth uh, video and podcast. Uh, today, I have a new friend with me, and Anne, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and what you love about what you do? Sure. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Anne. Um, I am born. I was born and raised in Germany. Um, I'm a single mom of a now 10-year-old son wow. and um, the proud mom of a new puppy. We just had him for a week, <laughs> our first dog. Um, so everything's a little bit chaotic in our house right now. But uh, other than that, I, I'm a life coach and um, mind-body connection coach, which I like to say. I work with women around body image, around self-love, around really like the title implies connecting the mind and the body and living from the body and not just with our minds right really healing our connection with ourselves and then doing whatever it is we want to do right if it if we want to go into business if we want to be the best mom we we can be if we want to i don't know go on adventures just being really at peace with the person you are and and knowing what it is that makes you you um and i i you know working with women is the most amazing thing you can you can do it's just so enlightening to to go deep and to 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 get to the core of what drives us or what dri drives you know each individual and also um talk about the fears and the the um, common humanity what we have in common when it comes to you know what we feel shame about and around what we what we fear in life what we feel is not right with ourselves and um, I came upon this work through my own history with eating disorders and um, other mental health challenges uh, and when I started to recover many, 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 many years ago, I started to, to tip my little toe into the life, life coaching community. And here I am many, many years later working with women. And sometimes I have to pinch myself, you know, that I'm actually doing this being on the other side, because for so long, I felt like I was just watching everyone else live. And I was sitting actually really in my bedroom, unable to go outside, unable to leave that room for so long. And yeah, sometimes that that just alone makes me makes me pause and think, yes. you know, the human spirit can change and evolve so much. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you so much for sharing that. I know that is really, really difficult to go through. Uh, we have experienced that in our family. Um, so I know it, it it can be a very dark place and for everyone involved. Um, so I am so awed by you that you were able to not only successfully navigate that, um, but also helping other people with body image and eating disorders and, and some of the other things you're helping people with, because, you know, it, it is sometimes one of those, um, situations where it's, you can't talk about it. You know, people yeah. can't know about it. Yeah. It's like a big secret and that makes it worse um, than being able to actually like, oh yeah, I have, I have diabetes. You, you can say that, right? right? Why shouldn't right. you be able to say I have an eating right. disorder or I have a mental health disorder or something like that? So cheers to you, girlfriend. Thank you. And you know, I when I started opening up about that, that's exactly what, what people around me told me. They were like, you'll never get a job. You'll never be able to be employed, you know? And, and you know, thinking back to 15 years ago, really, we we didn't talk about eating disorders and mental health challenges the way we do now. So we've, we've grown so much and I'm very glad that we, we did. Um, but for me, it was just selfishly, it helped me to talk about it Yeah, <laughs> and to be like, yeah. you know, this is what I'm struggling with. And it kept me accountable. So whenever someone told me that, you know, don't do it, I was like, no, this is, 
this is what I need to do to keep going. Um, for some reason, I couldn't, you know, I think, and, and, and you know, if, if, if you, if you've been around someone who has these struggles, you keep it secret for so long and it's a very open secret because everyone around you, right, knows what you're going through, but you're lying and you're telling, and you always say, no, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm really, really fine. I'm smiling. Look at me. But for me, there came a point where that just didn't work anymore. So I needed to, to kind of flip the switch and be, be really honest and vulnerable and open. Um, it was almost like that needed to happen for me to actually start healing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think sometimes the, when I talked about it and I thought about, you know, if just one person, just one person out there hears this or sees it or can relate in some shape or form, then my own struggle was not in vain, right? It, it, it happened for a greater purpose. So yeah, it was selfishly. I just talked about it far and wide Good. and it helped me. Good. And yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Good for yeah. you. And now you're helping other people with it. And I will say, and I don't know if it's, yeah, I know you're, you're in Germany now as well. And then I don't know if it's as bad over there, but here the body image, these girls and boys are inundated with mm -hmm. images of not so healthy ways to right. look. And like the ultra skinny or, or like, you know, whatever, whatever it is that the people behind the scenes are pushing as images are not healthy. So that must be a constant challenge to, you know, work with people trying to get them healthy. And then they're being bombarded with this every single day. Right. And you know, what's so fascinating about that is that we are aware that, you know, it does not look healthy or it's so photo photoshopped that, you know, it's not natural anymore. And it still does that to us, right? That's what I often find so harmful. And I talk with so many women who are like, you know, I'm an intelligent person. I'm educated. I am, I am, you know, in all other, as other areas of my life, I feel maybe strong or stronger, but this one thing, it just gets to me every time. And, um, so yeah, it, it 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 you don't even have to have you know have been sick in quotes to to be affected by these images. It it does something, and we're brainwashed, all of us, right? It's a, we we have been brainwashed throughout, and oftentimes that even the attempts to portray other body types they fall flat because we're so programmed to only see one kind of beautiful that um we almost cannot see you know or it, it 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 feels it feels wrong to see natural you know women or or other body types and i feel like the one thing that we can do is expose ourselves over and over and over again to other body types to reality to be outside to look around to go to the beach and see other women and not judging but just becoming aware of like who who looks the way you know models look like is there actually someone there may be one person who is like this and the rest yeah. they're different they're big and tall and short and you know um that that can be very helpful to just be like all right I'm actually going to live here in reality and but yeah my son actually who you know I just said he's 10 years old he in our house, we don't talk about diet. I've never made any judgments about his body. We don't talk about food in good and bad uh, terms. And he came to me a few months ago and he was like, out of the blue, mommy, can I go running with you tomorrow? My, my body is fat. Oh. And they pick it up. Like it was it was all good. He just made that one comment. I never heard about it ever again. I don't know, but something must have caused it, right? So children pick it up everywhere and they grow up with that. So I think that, yeah, it's on us to, to discern what is reality, what is not, and to affirm over and over and over again that 
bodies have cellulite, that bodies have pores, that bodies come in all and all shapes and sizes. And that it's not just something we say, but it's reality. It's like, that's the way yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's work. Yeah. Yeah. But it's for doable. sure. For sure. Now I know you coach on a couple different topics. So tell us a little bit about your coaching. Yeah. Um, so I started out coaching women who struggled with body image issues and really work on that body positivity. And, you know, as, as I grew as a person, as I evolved, I, and, and got more training, I also started to work with women around leadership business. Um, and it actually happened very naturally in that if you, you, if you connect with your body and if you're like, okay, I'm not just a head, I'm actually an entire human being. Um, you feel more confident and you feel more daring. And so, yeah, I, I, I do both at this point and it's so much fun to, to just support women in, in, you know, being the person they want to be in the end. Right. And, and just having most women who come to me, they're like, I have this vision or I have this, this job that I want to go after, but there's something right, but I don't look or, but I don't feel confident. So we, we really go deep into, into this and we make it fun. I like making the work fun. Um, yeah. Cause it's hard yeah, work. It is. And you know, it, it's serious work, but we don't have to be serious all the time. We can <laughs> actually have, have fun, you know, changing or, or yeah, changing our point of view and you know, for me around wealth and, and leadership, I always thought, and I had this very firm belief, very firm, it was not even a belief. It was like 100% certain I will never, ever make my own money. I have no idea where that came from. I've never been like my mom worked full time. My grandma worked like everyone around me was a working, working woman. But for some reason, I had this very, very deep seated belief and the older I got and, you know, I made money and I was able to to have a job. And, now, you know, I've, I've raised my son alone for 10 years. Um, but but having to change that belief was almost harder than the eating disorder because it was so firmly implanted. And I feel like as women, there's we all of us have a certain belief, like it doesn't have to be around the money aspect, but it mm -hmm. could be about the career or it could be about, um, you know, public speaking or walking into a boardroom and being like, you know, I'm, I'm the only woman, or maybe I own the, the, there's only a couple of women out here, but I belong and I deserve to be here. And Obviously, we know that more and more yeah. women need to be in boardrooms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? for sure, for, for sure. sure. And and I think that the more we can work on our own limiting beliefs, the better. Yeah, for sure. And I guess, you know, to me, it's like the imposter syndrome is what oh, you're yeah. describing. And I believe that women have struggle with that more than men. Um, you know, because a lot of times we won't even apply for uh, an advanced level position unless we have every single one of those traits or qualifications. Whereas guys, if they have half of them, they're like, yeah, I'll do that. And they apply for it. Right. It, so it's that whole, it's that struggle that we have internally that we're constantly fighting. It is. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I sometimes ask my clients is like, you know, how would a guy react or what would a guy do? Like if, if they were in your situation and it's not to pit women and men, uh, or yeah, men, no, women, I agree. you know, it's just like taking on that personality just for a moment yeah. and being more like, all right, yeah, I can do this. I might be able to just do it and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I think women think, overthink a lot of things, right? We're like, well, this could go wrong and that could go wrong and then this and that and that. And then we're like, okay, I'm not going to do it. Whereas <laughs> men, sometimes they're just like, whatever, I'm just going to try. And um, yeah, so there's a little bit of, sometimes we just have to kick our own butts and be like, yeah. okay, what would a guy actually do? I have, you know, coaching for what I do. And some of my coaches are men 
And I love it because then I get a different perspective on things and they hold my feet to the fire uh, and say, no, you, you can do this. You need to do it. And your, your accountability, like the accountability that they put there and when is it going to be done? So it forces me to do something I need to do that. I'm like having that same, like, Oh, can I do this? You know, type of reaction too. So sometimes it is great to have both a feminine and a masculine uh, input or, or coaching or, or whatever you want to call it um, for, for helping you go to the next stage. For sure. For sure. And um, I actually too have, um, I'm in a mastermind group where there's like four or five guys and two, two women. And it's true. You know, I love the, the, the mix of the, of the energies and quotes and, and the, you know, sometimes they're like, okay, let's just get to the point and this and this and this is what you're going to do. Whereas women often, we just, yeah, we ponder a little bit more. We talk a little bit more about things and which is also sometimes super, super important, right? To go deeper. And then sometimes we just have to take action and we just have to dare, you know? Um, sometimes I, I like to think about it. I'm a runner. I run a lot. And when I take too much time to think about going for a run, I never do. It's like, okay, I, I'm thinking about the route that I'm going to take and I'm thinking about, okay, now I have to put on the shoes and then it takes an hour and I'm like, no. But if, when I just go and I'm just like, you know, just going to decide left and right, whatever, then I'm, 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 I'm leaving, I'm going. And sometimes it's that first step to just go and then you can force correct. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you just, if you sit there and think about it too much, nothing gets done. I, I totally live that some days. <laughs> like, yeah. And then yeah. it's two or three hours later and you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Didn't really get much done today. That's not yeah. effective. So yeah, I, I like, I like that advice. Just go do it and you get a little bit more further down the path. You do. So if people want to learn more about you and what you're doing in your practice, where would they go uh, find out more information? Sure. Um, you can go to my website, which is anasophie.us. And um, Anasophie is the way you say it in German. So it's A-N-N-E-S-O-P-H-I-E dot U-S. Um, you can find a lot of resources there around body image, about, about around leadership and, and no dieting and all that. Um, yeah. And also Instagram, Facebook, I'm sure there will be show notes or the links will be there. Just yeah. Yeah, let absolutely. me know. Let me know what you know what the thing is that you're kicking your butt with. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, like, okay. yeah. Everybody has a happen. challenge. Yeah, you know, right. It, it's not all it. Facebook perfect. <laughs> no, no, and <laughs> that's that's another thing that can be like, oh, you know, everyone's oh, yeah. living that perfect life, but no, nobody. We is. only put the good things on there. I freely admit I only put my like oh my kids are going yeah. back to school oh look how pretty this is right. and then all the tough stuff I'm like under the covers like oh nobody needs to know about this you know? nobody needs to know about the weeks before school started right no. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's crazy that's for family who have to who have to listen to me <laughs> that's correct that's correct I feel you but yeah it's still fun to connect it's still Absolutely. fun to connect and and to just you know, sometimes to also see how small the world is and how familiar everything can be if we connect on, you know, on certain topics. And I, I love that part about social media a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So tell us maybe a challenge that you have faced as a professional woman. Well, the, one of the biggest challenges was I was a single mom from day one and I'm a, a little bit of a workaholic. I've always loved my work and I feel like being patient with myself and with the process of, you know, being, having, I mean, it's been 10 years since he was a newborn, but having that newborn that I was responsible for and really wanting it, like that was, I wanted to have a child and, and also loving my work and getting a lot of 
criticism from the outside of being a full-time working mom and not apologizing mm. for it. Yeah, so, you shouldn't. Right. And, but I had to come to terms with that. I really had to, that took me a while to be like, you know, I'm still a great mom. My son has not lacked anything. He knows I'm always at home. Most of the time I work from home. I'm most of the time I'm here when he comes home from school, I'm there. Like I, I carve out time for him. And he also knows I love to work. So, but that has been, that has been difficult that, you know, not, not taking on the criticism, criticism of others and putting it on myself mm -hmm. and, or, and, or then going into defense mode and being like, well, at least I'm working. Look at you. Right. Like that's, not, that's also not the person I want to be, or I, that's not who I am and what I think. So really being like, you know, this is my way of doing it. And my son will know that, you know, that's just, I mean, that's just the life that we live and he will come to learn that you need to work hard also at times to, to be able to afford things. And um, that work is not something to be dreaded or to be, you know, pushed aside or be like something like, oh, I have to do this, yeah. that, yeah. you know, can yeah. it, can it just be Friday, Friday night? <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess that was, that was definitely, it's, it was the mindset thing. Yeah. Well, you're also setting a very good example for him by showing him that, you know, nothing comes, nothing is free. And one, we have to earn a living. And two, it's important to do something you love Correct. because then you want to do it. You, you know, you want, want to, to work. work right. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's kudos to you. I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm not surprised that people gave you a hard time, but yeah. you know, it's still like, wow, really? <laughs> Why do we do that to ourselves? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or to yeah. each other. It's like, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not surprising. I feel like we can do better and be better as women. And, um, you know, I'm very hopeful that in the, in the future, everyone has their place, whether you want to work, whether you work part-time, whether you're stay at home mom, whatever it is you want to do, whatever you can right. do, just do it. Um, right. and, and own it in, in a way. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. And and then you also have the question of like, and then how is that helping him if you are not working? Like then he right. doesn't have what he needs. Like right. some people, people just don't think through those kind of comments. So yeah, they don't. And good for you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I mean, I'm a working mom. It's a, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it's like every day we're like, okay, I'm, are we doing this right? Are we doing this right? Yeah. But, um, you know, all, all it, you can just take it day by day. That's all you can do. Oh, anyway. absolutely. And and it doesn't have to be perfect. There is no perfect. No, there is no perfect not. parenting. There is no perfect momming. Um, there's no perfect work. You know, no. there's no real perfect work-life balance either. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a, you know, you just got to do what's right for you and right for your family. And that's what you're and, and you don't have to answer to anybody else for that. So that, tell them to put it in their pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I, I have a feeling this is going to be an interesting answer from you since, since you love to work so much, but what is your vision of retirement? <laughs> like getting in a time machine, you know, and right. going many, many years ahead. I'm hoping, yeah, um, I that I never retire because, first of all, there's two things to that. Um, I'm going to take this a little seri more in, into a serious road. My dad died three years ago, oh, right so before sorry. he was about to to retire. Um, oh. He he was a, um, a a GP and like he was a doctor through and through. He had pushed his retirement forever and ever and ever. And, but he died suddenly. And that, and he was young. So mm. that was like the thing where I was like, yeah, you have no idea if you'll ever no. retire, right? You or you have no idea. Like, and he wanted to do all these things. So there's two things. I hope I always love the work I do and I never have to retire and that I don't feel like, I need to retire to do all the things that I never got to do. So 
you know, I hope that I can live in the next decades and pursue whatever dreams and goals I have and see the world and, you know, just have, have a best life right now. And then there's no, you know, okay, now, like I'm 70 years old now, so I've retired so that I, I don't even know what I would do, yeah. but, um, you know, and in Germany, um, the way things look right now, I don't know if we'll ever be able to retire anyway. And that's a little <laughs> bit of a sarcastic hint. But yeah, um, that's all. I've, I actually never thought about that beyond, you know, just making sure I don't want to be like my father. And I mean, yeah. he loved yeah. his work. Like there's yeah. no, I think, you know, there was no, like he did not have time to live past his working life. Um, but it was more just the fact that, yeah, it can be over, right? And so, yeah. oh, in a minute, yeah, it's so minute. sad. In a right. minute, in yeah. a minute. So, yeah, well, I, I think, think that, about that that's a great, uh, that's something great to keep in mind because then you balance out. You don't push it off to thirty yeah. years from now. What what is going to make you happy? Yeah. Uh, but you also take it with a grain of sand and saying, okay, well, I can't afford to do everything I want to do, Correct. but I also don't can't afford to wait to do everything either. Okay. So you just balance out like, okay, well, you know, maybe these two things are on my bucket list. They are the top two things on my bucket list. Maybe my goal is to do one of them in the next five years. And I'm going to set aside time and money so that that's my goal and we're going to do it, you know, and, and that yeah. gets you there. That gets you there. And, you know, I mean, we, we just talked about summer vacation and summer vacation is about to end here. Um, we didn't do a big holiday this year, right? My son and I, like there, the funds were spent elsewhere. And so we got, we went and spent a week with, with my best friend had the best time. And sometimes, you know, it's not all about the big shiny things that you can do all the time. Absolutely. So also that's, that's something that I I'm trying to be conscious of. It's like, you know, we just hung out for a week. And yeah. that was it. Had good food and <laughs> and talk. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that, especially right? the good food. <laughs> especially that. <laughs> and and you know what? My son did not complain once. You know, he did not say, "Oh well, everyone's doing this and that." Um, and I think that, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to be like, "Okay, this is my um, my play fund or my 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 account for everything that I want to do. And sometimes it's just like, no, no, this year we're just gonna take a little bit of um more a more relaxed approach, I would say. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I love it. I love it. That's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'm very am, am admiring you, admiring your story and your strength. So thank, thank you for you. sharing that with us. Thank you so much for having me and for the great questions. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And want to thank everyone else for listening to us today too. And I think our action item is, is to um, really like ignore some of those social cues that you're getting and think about what's really important for you and, and, and kind of put blinders on to the body image things that you're seeing constantly on social media. Would you think that would be a good action item? That would be if fabulous yeah sometimes awesome. we just have to walk around like this yeah you do you do <laughs> like i'm never gonna look like that and i don't want to either because i like to eat <laughs> exactly that's the thing it's like i, I enjoy this food a little bit too much uh, not, and there's, there's no too much but i enjoy this food and i'm not gonna deprive myself so yeah, yeah. so somebody like um somebody I talked to uh was telling me oh uh well you shouldn't eat apples because of this and this has lectins in it and i'm like listen <laughs> I eat candy every day. So yes. until I stop eating candy, I think the apple's okay. The apple will be just fine. Yeah. You can go down rabbit holes if you yeah. start with that, right? I um, know, no, no, no. I, I can't. I just can't. I love the person dearly, but I'm like, no, we're not, we're not going there. I'm going to have an apple. It's good for me. It has fiber. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us again. I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. My website is forgewealth.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Forge Wealth and LinkedIn, Regina McCann Hess. Go make it a great day.